Before we get started properly, I just want to give some credit where it's due. I want to credit Dangerous ASMR for her Yandere Apocalypse ASMR video. If you haven't watched that first, make sure to go watch it first before coming back here. The link for it will be in the description and in the title to come up here. You should probably have had it by now. What I'm doing is essentially expanding the lore out a little bit by having an audio log of a nearby outpost explaining what happened to them. Without further ado, let's begin. This thing even work? The light's on. Oh, okay, it's working. I'm leaving this recording for anyone who stumbles upon this recording. I don't have too long before we have to abandon the outpost, but I should still have enough time to explain from the beginning. About uh, two years ago, Valentine's Day hit. You know the routines. Lots of guys are getting chocolates and flowers for that girl in their life. You know how it is. My case was mostly the opposite, but that can be saved for a different time, if I have time. Anyways, it turns out that literally every chocolate brand had been infected somehow. Oddly, it only affects girls, but what it did was make them more love-driven, so to speak. They started to become extremely possessive of their loved ones, obsessive even. Believe it or not, it gets even worse. These obsessed, love-crazed women had gone so far as to chain them up inside their own houses. I can't get into too many details, but you get the picture. I believe the Japanese had called it the Andre Plague. We are a group of individuals known by the name of Absolute Zero. No, we're not called that because we were considered nobodies. But rather the fact that we like to live in this frigid area. It can get as cold as around negative 25 Celsius. What sets us apart from the other groups of survivors is that we do not allow any woman in, period. It was just me at first, but it soon blossomed into around 15 to 20 of us. My brother even somehow found me. Now we're down to just five. Our outpost was Site Beta 9, otherwise known as Frozen Oasis. Lots of us had similar stories, but they were all varied. I remember one from our electronics expert that he knew a friend that was a cameraman from the local news station. Apparently, he was tied up with the electrical cord from his news camera while an infected woman was ravaging him. Not in the literal way of devouring him, but more so in the metaphorical sexual way. The first few weeks of the pandemic really were the most terrifying. The main compound is dug into the side of a mountain, but there are outside parts, mostly guard posts. The facility was actually built by a shadow army, but was quickly abandoned soon after this incident. We've refurbished it for our own purposes, and it's worked for us. There's hydroponic basins for us to grow food, even in these frozen conditions. We've also got solar and wind, so power isn't even an issue for us. We're pretty self-sustaining. We also have communications between other outposts like ours. Side Epsilon 5, Side Omega 14, Side Omega... Alpha 1, to name a few. Well, ones that we know that are up, still up and running, but I honestly don't know how long they'll last. We do occasionally go on expeditions in search of mostly weapons. They're not as easy as you think, since this isn't exactly an undead faction or even a regular one. The main thing to stay away from is women altogether. We have one big rule. All women are to be declared as lost and compromised, and are to be shot on sight, regardless if they're infected or not. It's cruel, I know, but it's what we have to do to stay alive. I do believe that- no, I know that there are still women out there who are very pure and, more importantly, uninfected. But we can't take chances, especially not after what happened to Side Omega-6. Recently, we noticed in our expeditions that the power's on, most public services are still active, water's clean and flowing, it's fucking creepy. You would expect that all that would cease eventually, and it was for a good while. The frigid temperatures helped tremendously, but it isn't foolproof. Girls still circle the area like vultures. 
They know we have a shoot on site protocol, so they'll stay hidden and wait. There are ones we encounter at the main gate, but... I can't tell you how many presumably innocent girls we've shot. I still tell myself that they're all infected anyways. They were just trying to deceive their way in. As much as I love the sound of a blizzard blanking in the area around me, the low visibility puts us all at risk. Even during the blizzard, they'll still find you. We would occasionally have a swarm of infected girls attempt to storm the front gate and or try to climb the sides of the wall. It started out pretty lightly and pretty infrequently. We'd dispatch them pretty easily, but over time, the attacks started getting worse and worse. It went from small groups to uh, about once every two or three weeks to about three to four times a week. The city had a huge ratio of women to men, around maybe 10 to 1. There was certainly no shortage of girls to come after us. Just about a month and a half ago, we lost contact with Side Omega 6. That sucks as that was our only weapons trader, and that's the one thing we needed guns. Apparently, what had happened was that one of the scavenging parties returned from a supply run. Since at least one of them was a female, she had gotten infected by somebody, then spread it to the other girls in their settlement. I went on an expedition the next day to essentially find out what happened. Whole place was torched. There were no usable supplies, no trace of where anybody went. We got back and I found out that Site Gamble 14 was sending it the stress signal. We couldn't risk another trip, especially when it's that far away. Site Epsilon 5 is closer to us if we needed any trading done, but it's a trade route that hadn't been established yet. In the meantime, the girls had something planned. They'll know eventually that just bum rushing the gate and wall like they have been won't work. They were all usually armed with stuff like kitchen knives, mainly for uninfected women, as they thought that the non-infected were out to try and steal their loved ones away from them. Fucking ridiculous. Ever since we lost Side Omega-6, our ammo was starting to run thin. We've had to conserve ammo as best we could. We tried studying disease ourselves, until like there's no shortage of the chocolate around us. Girls just try throwing us gifts and shit all over the wall anyway. We've been hoping that we can develop a cure, or at least a vaccine. I hope that whatever research progress was made is still there in the lab. If there is, then the research notes will be in that room, somewhere in a folder labeled VDI-14. As far as I know about it, nothing really. We were hit really bad a few days back. Some were able to climb the wall, utilizing others as well as dead bodies. We opened fire on them. More started coming over. We barely just had the firepower to push them back. Although that wasn't it. They managed to kidnap one of our own. I was on the balcony of one of the outside buildings. I didn't see what happened. But once the girls started retreating, the others had told me what exactly had happened. I was furious and petrified. That was our first loss. We lost one. He's probably getting brutally raped by whoever claimed him. This told us that we were next. Last night, they attempted the siege. There were so many of them. It was probably half the fucking city population. They had gotten their own weapons, mostly tasers. They had also somehow secured anti-tank launchers to break through the wall. The front gate was made out of six inches of reinforced steel, so they instead blasted through the eight-inch concrete wall. We fought them off as best we could, but their numbers were just overwhelming. Perhaps the most terrifying part of all this is that they never had the intention of killing us. Hence the girls all armed with tasers. We lost almost all of us that night. A few of them were lucky. They shot themselves after being tased. The ones who didn't... I wish you the way. I've watched as many of the people I've led and fought alongside being taken away from us. My partner was one of them. I was saved myself, but luckily I was saved before I had to either shoot myself or be taken. My own father <laughs> was taken from me and I could do was watch. 
be retreated into the main facility to lock down the area. The blast doors on the main underground part were even tougher than the main gate. They couldn't get inside, thank God. They were banging on that door for hours, promising not to hurt us if we let them in. Their begging and pleading for us to let them in was just blood curling here. They gave, up, they gave up after a while and left. They'd taken whoever was left alive. I don't want to think about what they'll do to them, but from what I've seen and heard, it's fucking mortifying. Morning broke out. We barely got any sleep at all, as well as very disturbing nightmares. We opened the facility door, and all I could see was that the bodies and the infected girls, along with the few guys who opted out before they could be abducted. Buildings were ransacked. The hole from the anti-tank weapon is still there. It's a fucking mess. Since it was ultimately my decision, I've made the choice to abandon this outpost. We're packing up what we can as we speak, and we'll be leaving soon. Whoever finds this, know that this site is compromised to all hell. You won't be safe here. We'll be heading to Site Epsilon 5. You should know what that is by now. I just hope that it's not too late. My final words to you, whoever's listening. Viva la revolución.